Hi, welcome to the video. So today I'm going to cover your extended pentatonic, and we also do a quick refresher on the minor pentatonic. Um, I won't spend as much time on that because I've already done a video on minor pentatonic um, entitled First Scale I Teach. And these are the first two scales I teach, and I'll leave a link in the corner like I just was pointing to, and it'll also be in the description. I'll also leave a link in the description of some more advanced pentatonic scale videos I've done. Um, the pentatonic scale is the primary one you see in styles like classic rock, classic metal, um, blues, but you also will find in jazz fusion, in some more modern um, rock, metal, country. It's kind of a good kind of gateway scale to get you started, to then go into the more harder or difficult stuff at a later point. The reason why it works good as this is because it, a pentatonic scale, penta just means five, so it's got five notes in it. That's all it means. Now, most, that really could be any five note scale, but usually if sounds a pentatonic, they just mean your minor pentatonic. Uh, and the, your basic modes, diatonic scales, like major, minor, um, Dorian, Phrygian, Mixolydian, etc., those all have seven notes in them. Pentatonic fits inside those, it's just leaving two notes off. So if I play a minor pentatonic, or I play a natural minor, the pentatonic fits inside there, you're just leaving two notes off. So getting down the pentatonic will also help you better play the diatonic scales at a later point. Okay, so let's go and jump into this. Now, the, all this will be tabbed out, all the fingerings, and I include the names of the notes that I'm playing, the fingers I'm using. Um, you can download that, that for free on my Patreon page, which link will be in the description of the video. And that's true of all my videos. You can always download the tab for free on my Patreon page. Um, you don't have to be a member, but if you guys want to donate and become members, I would definitely appreciate that. Otherwise, if you can just click like or su subscribe or leave a comment, that's good enough too. I'd appreciate that. Now, pentatonic, once I learn one shape, it can be moved to any fret, just like a power chord. All I have to do is take the same shape and move it to a different fret. So if I want B minor instead of A minor, I start on a B note, and then I've got B minor. If I want D minor, I start on D, but the shape doesn't change. So let's run through the basic shape first, and then I'll jump into extended one. So this just goes two notes per string, five, eight, five, seven. So I do a five, seven, three times, then five, eight, five, eight. Now the main things to keep track, or keep in mind when you're pressing any scale is get a good sounding note first, that's most important. So finger close to the mouth fret, but not on top of it, we're gonna get a buzz. You, if you move away from the fret, you have to apply more pressure, so that's why you're keeping it close. But you want to keep a constant note ringing out. So when I'm playing a note, and then I replace something on the same string, I keep this ringing out until I put down the other finger. Don't even pick up this finger, because it doesn't have to be picked up. And this way, I'm ready to come back to it if I want. And if you pick it up, you're on the risk of having a pause when you change. So just keep it ringing until you place the other finger. When changing strings, Keep the note ringing while you reach for the next string, and that's true of either direction. The mistake I see a lot of beginner or intermediate players do is they try and reposition their fingers, but then they have a pause between every string change. Okay, so that was your basic minor pentatonic. Now, I'm going to jump into extended one. The extended one uses the middle section of that, but then it uses the bass section of like a mixolydian position, if I'm thinking of this as my relative minor, and the high section of the major position. So this is gonna be easy fingering too. I'm only gonna need the first and third finger for the extended one, because anytime I would need to stretch, I'm just gonna slide instead. So it's gonna be three, five, three, five, slide up to seven. So on this, you could slide on the first finger instead, by notated as sliding on the third finger, because that's more common but it's perfectly fine to do either way. Now, when I reverse this, then I usually will slide on the first string. So basically what I'm doing is I'm playing all the notes that are comfortably in my reach, and then when I have another note, I slide to it. So if I'm, again, I'm playing all the notes, I want to go back, I slide to it. So that will determine, just play the notes you reach, then slide forward. Now you can do two different ways on this slide. You can do what's called a legato slide, where I only pick the first note, and I don't pick the second note, but still hear it. That would be notated with a straight line and then curve over it. Or I can do a shifting slide, where I pick both notes. 
Um, I note it as the legato slide, but you can do either one. It's personal preference. It's not right or wrong. So as I go through this again, like there I did the shifting slides. I'm going to do five seven. So again, I'm right in that other scale we've already done. Then we're side up to nine. Now at this point, I normally am keeping one finger per fret, but that would put me on my second and fourth finger. That would be something I would do maybe if I was only going to hit one note and then come back, which I'll demonstrate in a second. But right now, I'm going to shift my first finger instead. So I'm going to scrunch my fingers together at that point and go 8, 10 on my first and third finger. So the whole thing can be played with first and third finger this way. Um, the reason I don't necessarily want to be on my pinky if I'm going to be hanging out here is a lot of bends, pull-offs, hammer-ons, vibratos are done. And most people don't feel as comfortable doing that with their pinky, so you're better off on your first and third finger. Now when you descend, I'm mean, going to do it first with just the first and third finger, that will show a variation where you can use your second finger. So in a basic way, I'm when I ascend up, I slide on the third finger. When I descend, I slide on the first finger. And a basic exercise you can do to get better with that is just Isolate back and, and go back and forth with your legato shifting slides on it and get used to that shifting. Now, when I'm coming down, because a lot of times if I'm actually playing in this area and improvising, I'm going to use my second finger instead of my third finger there because it keeps me in position. So I might end up sliding on that finger too. So at this point, I could either slide still on the first finger and that'd be fine. Or you can just slide on the second finger right away and then reach for the first finger. So you have two options there if I'm on my second finger. Or now of course, like I was saying earlier, you could also when you're on third finger, slide on the first finger, or if you want to, you can slide on the third finger. And that's fine too. So I wrote, wrote down all those options on the tab on it. Now there are times when I wouldn't use my first and third finger. So let me demonstrate a lick that would do that. So let's say I'm playing here. I'm doing something like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and use my second finger because there's no reason to pull myself out of position here to use my first finger since I'm going to come right back down on this. So, you know, in that case, I would stay in position for what I'm doing. But if I was going to, again, hang out here, for a while, then I'm going to move to my first and third finger. Okay, let me show you the tab on this stuff. And a good way to practice this, first, just get it memorized. That's the most important thing. You can't really apply it till it's memorized. Uh, so as soon as possible, these are simple shapes. You should memorize them in a very short period of time. Uh, and then start either learning licks from it, um, seeing if you can find it in, in songs you know. Um, most common positions you'll find this minor pentatonic mm -hmm. is in the key of a minor or E minor, so either at 5th fret or 12th fret, but it can be played at any fret. Uh, but those are the two most common keys in popular music, so that's where you're going to see it most often. Um, or it's just start improvising with it. And it doesn't have to be anything complex. You might think, well, improvising is hard, I don't know what to do on that. Just start playing through a scale randomly and then pausing. So for example, at first, just kind of play and move up and down at any point you, you can change directions. So go a couple notes and then come back the other direction. Or go a few notes and then stop in vibrato. Vibrato just means kind of shaking the note and kind of create a pause. And don't worry if it sounds like some great musical piece. It doesn't have to. Right now you're just getting comfortable moving through the scale and hearing how the different notes sound and then you can start creating licks from it and again look for it in the songs you already know. So let me show you the tab on this. So you've got that first line is just your basic minor pentatonic. The notes which again you don't necessarily have to know right now but it's good long term to kind of start knowing the notes on that. I've done some videos on that too if you have trouble with that. And then you got this basic sliding position and then down here I show, let me kind of see where I'm pointing, okay, the different options and underneath there are the fingering. So I show the different fingering options depending if you're using second finger or third finger or such. Down here is that little exercise which you could do at either of the sliding points, just go back and forth on it. Alright, and then at the very bottom was that 
little sliding lick I did at the end to demonstrate that you don't necessarily pull your finger in solid position in that lick. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Um, check the description for more advanced pentatonic or for diatonic scales. And thanks for watching, you guys.